it's Mike from Technical Support. We're here in the Hunter Park today to show you the proper practices to use when installing a Hunter valve. Proper installation of irrigation valves is extremely important. Taking the time to do it correctly can minimize the chances of having to go back to the job site. Since valves are generally buried in the ground, it is one of the more difficult and time-consuming components to work on in an irrigation system. Since valves control the flow of water and also use electricity, there are really two different installation practices to consider. Installation to the piping system and connection to the controller. So whether you're installing a one inch valve or larger, there are some basic concepts that you'll want to follow. There are two types of male threaded connectors, male adapters and nipples. If you are using nipples, the use of nipples with cut threads rather than fittings with molded threads is recommended. On molded fittings and nipples, there can be variation in the overall thread size of these molded fittings, which can lead to fittings being too tight in some valves and too loose in others. The cut threads in this nipple are much more accurate and provides for a better chance at a leak-free installation. Let's talk for a minute about what to use as a thread lubricant. Teflon paste and Teflon tape are two that are used in the irrigation industry, and in the case of valve installation, we recommend the use of Teflon paste. The reasons for this are that paste tends to fill the voids between the threads of the valve and the nipple, making for a more secure connection. When you use Teflon tape, you are actually adding some size to the nipple, which can make for a fit that is tighter than necessary between the nipple and the valve. The first step is to inspect the threads to make sure there is no debris that could hinder your work. Next, spread some of the Teflon paste onto the threads of the nipple. You want to go all the way around and be sure not to use too much. Excess paste will be pushed out once you thread it into the valve, but that makes for more work cleaning it off. Go about three quarters of the way down the threads and you are ready to install it into the valve. Now, hand tighten the nipple into the valve be sure not to use the flow control stem or the solenoid as a handle. Just grasp the body of the valve. Now take a wrench and tighten the fitting about a quarter turn more. That should give you a good leak-free seal. Next, you would do the same thing on the other side of the valve and then it would be ready to glue into the piping system. So on larger systems, you may want to consider placing a union on the downstream side of the valve to connect to the lateral line and a ball valve on the upstream side of the valve. It makes it easier to shut down the water right at the valve if you ever need to perform service. And the union also provides a way to take the valve body out of the ground without having to cut the pipe in case of future maintenance needs. So as you can see here, Hunter also manufactures the PGV valve in a slip version. The inlet side and the outlet side are both smooth ready to accept the PVC pipe. You install the pipe into the valve just like you would in a regular PVC fitting, but the amount and the placement of the glue is key to your success. You want to put just the right amount of glue in the pipe. That way you don't inadvertently push extra glue into the valve, possibly clogging the downstream port. Once you have your valve installed to the piping system, to finish the job, you'll need to complete the wiring connections. Solid waterproof connections are easy to make, but you'll need to use good wire connectors. This isn't the place to skimp, as connections that are not waterproof will eventually corrode, leading to a service call. This is the DBY R6, which we recommend for our decoder systems, and they also work great on standard 24 volt systems. There's other types of connectors, but the very best one is the DBY R6. First, you'll want to strip off about three quarters of an inch of insulation on the field wires. You'll notice that the Hunter solenoid wires are pre-stripped. Next, put the wires side by side and insert the wire net over the ends of the wires, twisting the wire net in a clockwise direction. Make sure you get the wires good and snug inside the wire net. Push this assembly into the grease tube getting it all the way to the bottom to ensure that the connection is completely surrounded by the grease. Position the wires in these grooves at the top of the tube, and then firmly close the top. 
You'll feel it click shut and you'll know you have it fully closed and sealed. So following these simple steps will give you confidence in your valve installation. Doing it right the first time will ensure you get many years of reliable service. For more information, visit our website at hunterindustries.com. And thanks for watching.